Be humble enough to learn from others. And I don't care how well you're doing in the business. Dude, one of my favorite Jim Rohn quotes of all time is, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Uh, and that mean, th- that quote has stuck with me for, for the years. I love sitting across from people that you know are just doing some really, really cool things. And if you haven't ever Googled Dan Prado, I promise you need to. The guy is in doing some really amazing, fun things. You know, Dan, as I you know, was building this business, going from that employee to kind of that CEO mindset. Man, it's, it's been a seriously a massive leap because I'm exploring a whole lot of worlds that, that I don't didn't know much about, don't know much about, and I'm still learning along the way. How would I or how do my listeners put themselves in a position to really up that mindset and get after it? Donnie, great question. I, I think the best way for me to answer that right off the bat, and I'm, I'm just going to hit a home run with it because this matters the most. Education is very costly, but so is ignorance. <laughs> and that's a True. quote from Klaus Moser. And when you really digest that and meditate on that thought, that is the beginning of it all. Uh, you cannot go anywhere. You can't get to any level without commitment to always be in the student. You see, school never gets out. I don't care what level of entrepreneurship you're in. You have to stretch yourself. One of my great authors that I love to follow is Ed Milet. Ed Mm. Milet's a tough old boy, strong, tough, just finished up with a book called uh, The Power of One More. And his mindset is you have to stretch yourself beyond your current capacities. And you also have to surround yourself with people that push you and challenge you. Now, I think this is a great way to get right into the, to this powerful hour of uh, conversation organically. And that is you need to have coaches. You need to have mentors. If you think you can go on your own, which you can, you can go fast alone, but you can go a lot further together. Surround yourself with amazing people that actually believe in you. When I was a high school wrestler, college wrestler, college boxer, all that stuff, I'm not going to make this about me, but I'm going to use myself here as an example. I had a coach one time when I was weighing in for a night match. Now, I thought I was pretty good. I was a junior. I thought, hey, you know, I'm pretty good. I got my tail handed to me my sophomore year. I mean, I got, you know, get, get on the bull. The bull stomped me every day, just stomped on my head. <laughs> I got so sick of it, man. I got so sick of it. I said, that's it. Enough's enough. It's like Jim Rohn said, when's enough's enough? You get sick of it and you got to do something with your life. So it was that moment. It was one of those defining moments. We all have quite a few of them, don't we? That have shifted our thinking and our direction in life. And so on that night, before that wrestling match, I was weighing in early to see if I was going to be on, on, on weight. My coach whispered in my ear, the most powerful words. He said, you know what, Danny, there's nobody in this league's going to touch you this year. Wow. Wow. Now that was powerful, Donnie, because what he did is he transferred to me that message that, you know what, kid, you got what it takes. Believe in yourself. So my answer is this. If you're going to, if you're going to take yourself to another level, Be humble enough to learn from others. And I don't care how well you're doing in the business. And this is a a consistent theme for me that keeps popping up right now. I was just in Atlanta, Georgia, doing a keynote for the Battle Business Summit. A bunch of veterans there with Zach Knight and his crew. I I saw it. And uh, it was so fun, so much fun being down there. Um, and I, I met a new guy named Chris Dadian, and him and I were talking. And Chris speaks all over the world. He's speaking um, uh, at the Formula F1 headquarters. Like I think he's there this week. He's speaking at Virgin America in a couple of weeks, um, wow. and or not Virgin America. Uh, he's actually speaking Virgin UK, where, where Richard is, and. And you're getting a chance to meet with Richard, but uh, I'm talking to Richard like I'm, him and I are on first name basis. He's speaking with Richard. Hey, it's Branson, great. Right? No, no, I know. I love it. I love it, Donnie. No, no. There's a connection, though, isn't there? For sure. For sure. Right. And, and I was talking to Chris. And one of the things he said, uh, he goes, Donnie, look at this room. 
and we were looking out over all of Atlanta and he said, he goes, I think I can teach everyone in this room. And I said, me too. I think I could teach everybody in this room something. And then he looked me dead in the eye and he said, man, I also think I can learn from everybody in this room. And man, it hit me like wow. a ton of bricks because I didn't have that mindset, right? My mindset is I'm the teacher. And he said, watch the people who are successful in this room. Watch how they work this room. They don't make it about them. They don't talk about them. They're shutting up. They're listening because they're learning and observing. I went, wow. So, so this is huge for me. Um, and it, I can tell for me at this moment of time, this is a great level up moment for me. This is like one of those times you're like, cool. This is a awesome. skill set I've got to learn to go through. Yeah. You, you know, know I, one of the things so, I, oh, go ahead. For go me, ahead. you know, go, 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 go. Come on, come on. No, I, I, I like where you're leaning towards it. So this shouldn't be about us. I mean, you and me individually, right? Now we're growing together here. Right. But if you have a philosophy of this, helping people achieve success and win by empowering them to see themselves and others better than they are, that's a powerful philosophy, and that's the number one philosophy in my fourfold philosophy. And if you follow this philosophy a little bit, this is something that's so transferable across the board. The second thing is to always be the student, get better every day at what I do, so that I can be that much better for everyone else and everything else I do. Three, to build the very best relationships based on true appreciation for one another. So you see how we're making it? It's about, it's about all of us in the big picture. And last but not least, Donnie, and I think this is the ultimate, and you have to do this. If you don't, why are you even doing it? Have some fun doing it, man. Have some fun doing it. You know, I saw some of the stuff that you posted recently on your LinkedIn. It was awesome. You're talking about the experience. How cool are the experiences with these people? New experience, meeting new people. And, and helping people network properly so that they can actually grow their business by monetizing it. it, it that's, that's another thing that people forget, right? That's, that's a message. So there's so much involved in uh, when you meet people to make sure it's about them and not about you. And here's what happens when you make it about them. You grow so much. You're growing from it. Because what you learn from others changes you. I'll give you, I'll give you an example, okay? So right. I'm, I'm sitting at this place called Innovation Collective in downtown Coeur d'Alene. Coffee shop, incubator businesses. People come down and then they network. I'm reading a book called The Ideal Team Player by Patrick Lencioni. And this gentleman across the table looks at me and goes, what are you reading, man? And right away I loved it. Because here's someone interested. And I said, I'm reading this book. And he goes, uh, tell me what it's about. I said, well, it's about, it's about a, a company that has a criteria for people that joins their business. And that is humble, hungry, and smart. And he goes, whoa, say that again. I go, it's an acronym, HHS, humble, hungry, and smart. You got to have all those if you're going to be on this team. He goes, wow. He goes, what do you do for a living? I said, I help people win. He says, how do you do it? I said, by empowering them to see themselves better than they are, man. I go, there's a lot of untapped potential in people. Like right now, I'm, after we're done here in about an hour and a half, I'll be doing executive coaching for a, a powerful executive who's so humble. I mean, he's so humble that he's like, Danny, I want to I want to get some of what you eat and you drink. What do you eat and drink, man? I want some of it. <laughs> so everybody, everybody wants to learn from, you know, someone and be open to it. So here's what happened. This guy says, hey, you know, you need to meet this guy, a friend of mine named Michael. He's over at this place and he does consulting. He, you and him do a lot of similar things. He says he does more of the executive uh, engagement, team building. I said, well, I'll do some of that myself, but I'm really big into personal growth and professional growth. And he said, what a combo you two would make. He set up a meeting with us and I'll fast forward. We hit it off. We did a live event together and now we're blowing it up and doing a second live event together. And we're, there's going to be a lot more people a lot more people that can learn and grow and develop and expand beyond their current capacities. Donnie, I'm telling you, this stuff is infectious and in what you're talking about. And I've been following you. 
your message is awesome. Your message yeah. is you need to get out there. You need to meet people. And when you meet them, make the most of the time that you spend with them. And again, Michael and I, we just blend. I don't know. You ever con connect with certain people that you just go, yeah, Man, just it. this just works. And I love that. You know, he, I just, I'm just so excited about it and I'm excited about what's going to transpire from there. And all the people, when they leave, when they leave that talk, like when they left the, the summit that you left, you know how yep. many people got in their car? I can tell you this much. There's a ton of people that got in their cars and were driving home. You know what they said to themselves? Man, I got to make some changes, man. Mm. I got to make some changes. And when I make these changes, as Jim Marone said, if you want things to change, you need to change. And when you change, things will change for you. And it's true. <clears throat> Dude, one of my favorite Jim Rohn quotes of all time is, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Uh, Absolutely. And that, mean, th th that quote has stuck with me for, for the years. You know, for, for, for me, I, I, I get hung up on, I want to teach, serve, help people. I also want to go big and I'm honestly not good at the transition from teacher to student, right? That's, that's, that, that's a, a clunky move for me at the moment because I've done so many things. I've got so much damn knowledge up there. I've got so much passion about helping people that I forget to turn off that passion for helping people and take a moment to go, dude, just sit here for a few minutes and, and, and just learn. Just listen. When I do do that, kind of the flip side of that, I also do do the the too much input, right? Where I've taken too many things in, and now I have to go shit. Now it's time to implement. All right, now I'm gonna actually take action on some of this stuff, or it's gonna stack up against me. Yeah, that uh, I, I run into that myself. Matter of fact, the meeting that I will be having later is uh, on. Uh, this executive who's an awesome guy and he wants to connect more with his team. And he says, I just have a tough time conveying that. He goes, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I convey it like you do. I said, well, you're not me. You don't have to be me, but I can tell you some steps on how to get there. And he said, I'm right. all open, man. I want to learn. And I think number one is how much do you value your people? How often do you meet with them? How often do you ask them for ideas to make the company better, to make a system or a process work better, right? It's like when, when, when we're meeting with a sales client, heck, you had a terrific guest on, really liked him, and I clicked right away with what you guys were talking about. And uh, I think it's Jerry McNamara, is it? Jerry McNamara is a friend of yours, I think. Oh, guy. Jerry's such a good dude. God, he's Jeez. a great dude. Yeah. And I just related to this so much. So look at back to the student, right? I was the student that day. I was listening to that podcast. He talked about relieving a pain for the mm. customer. That's our job is to relieve a pain or help them gain pleasure. We buy for those two reasons. And finding the sweet spot he talked about which I think is cool. You've got to find that through the engagement. And he did talk about all the steps and it's no different when you're engaging with your own team or other people in the industries that you connect with. And that is, how do you get attention? How do you build some interest? Right? I always think this, I love what Jeffrey Gittimer says. He's a tough Northeast guy. They eat their young up there. Mm. I love it, man. I love his toughness. Uh, he says, look at, if a customer's not interested, it's because you're not interesting. Make yourself interesting. 100%. <laughs> you know, I don't agree have with a something. lot of things Jeffrey teaches as when it comes to sales, yeah. but I love that. He's right on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't agree with a lot of stuff I read in books. I'll tell you what I do. I shred a lot of the crap, and there are some great golden nuggets that I take from it. I learn from every book I read. Heck, one of the greatest mm. quotes I ever got was out of Empires of the Mind by Dr. Dennis Waitley, who was a sports psychologist, business psychologist. And he said what the Olympic athletes that were gold medalists, what was so different in their minds versus those who didn't medal was one thing. They believed this. 
Who you see is who you'll be. Who you see is who you'll be. So you cannot become who you want to become by remaining who you are. It's impossible. Yeah. And so, yeah, I take some good stuff from Jeffrey Gittimer. So I use I'll, some of it. But I, anyway. Yeah, I, I want to go down that, that for a second because – um, with one of my coaches and mentor, a gentleman by the name of Bob Russo, he's literally, he's my mindset coach, right? That's all we work right on, on, on a regular basis. One of the things he said to me, and I want to use the exact phrase, and I know I've got it written down here, but he said that there's two words and those two words are, uh, like, and when I say this, people are going to take it to the biblical thing. And I'm not a religious dude, so I don't mean him that way. But but what he said was, is you got to take the two words, I am. Right? Right? You already are enough. Right? You're, you know, in uh, one of the things he said is, goes, Donnie, you got to be okay being Donnie. You know, because as, as a blue-collar kid growing up, I always kind of live through somebody else's stories, whether it was my older brothers or in my sales careers, you know, it was all these guys that I looked up to and the like. And I don't think I've always looked at my path going, you know, I, I am that guy. Right. And it's the phrase I am already what I need to be. That was a good, powerful mental shift for me because I think, and I'll speak for myself. I think a lot of my journey, I thought, well, I had to be a certain way to be able to do a certain thing. I had to act a certain way to do a certain thing. And that when the truth of the matter is, is I got to be me while doing the thing, right? Um, and Absolutely. it's action of being okay with yourself. That, and your mentor is spot on. He's spot on. It's true, Donnie. So you, you can't, even though I aspire to get to certain levels or I aspire to take on the traits of other leaders. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when it's your time and your style, you got to just one, believe in it, have confidence in yourself and let it fly. Let it fly. You know, I love, for example, I was so afraid to do public speaking. I hope this helps you. I hope this helps everybody in the audience scared. I was an assistant wrestling coach and my coach said, you're going to have to need to speak at the banquet. I said, coach, man, I'll hand out the awards, but do not have me speak. Now, a lot of the people that know me today, they see me as a very outgoing guy, but there was a lot of fear and insecurity. Grew up in a big family of nine kids. You kind of get lost in the shuffle sometimes. Look at my mom and dad loved us all dearly. And my dad since passed away and I love him and respect him dearly. Blue collar guy, steel worker, steam fitter, worked hard. My mom, just tough, you know, grinding every day, taking care of the family, uh, but didn't grow up with a lot of money. And so you start, you start pigeonholing yourself into believing like, you know what? I don't think I'll ever make a lot of money or I don't even think I'll ever expand to be some of those things I aspire to, Boy, I'd sure like to have the success. Some of those great athletes or, or some of those great speakers and all that. And what happens is you set your own parameters and I guarantee you, you'll hit those your own parameters. So they could be the parameters of, of insecurity and uh, disappointment and embarrassment and you fear, 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 fear until you wake up in the fetal position and you're sick to your stomach and you almost don't want to get out. So I have this mindset like Tim Grover, one of the guys I love to follow, who was the personal trainer for Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. Michael Jordan, Dwayne Wade, all those guys. I got his book, Relentless, back there. And he, he says, let's go. You don't absolutely have to like all the hard work, but you better crave the end result. You have to crave the end result. Mm. What do you want to accomplish in life? Right. And he makes no excuses. So one of the things that I like about him and one of the messages is he says, your mind has to be stronger than your emotions. And mm. that's hard to do. You know why? Because we are creatures of emotion. We make, sure. even in the sales world, and I share this with sales guys, I do sales training for, uh, for an organization right now. One of the things I tell them is that people will buy emotionally, but they'll 
claim it's logically. And it's very important that your tone and your word usage, your language is in tune with that. But what I like is your mind has to be stronger. And here's what, here's what Tim says. Your emotions tells you to stay in bed. Your mind tells you get up and get out of there and go, man. You got things to accomplish today. So I think what separates uh, those who accomplish more than others is they're committed, number one, to the disciplines, to the daily disciplines. And if you're not, you're going to wallow in mediocrity and you're going to suffocate. Here's what happens too. You're having some success and you feel it. You get on a roll. You know what I'm talking about. We all Mm -hmm. get on it. Some of the dreams now are coming to fruition. You got past the fear factor in certain areas, right? And the best way to get over fear, I tell people, get in the ring, put your mouthpiece on, put your headgear in and fight. You take action, that relieves a lot of that tension. And so I love the idea of, okay, if you're going to be in the battle, you got to be willing to fight and you got to take action. Action takes care of a lot of things. And for sure, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, I put a little on a three by five card. I write out the word fear. I got this from somewhere. I don't remember, but it made sense to me. And I write it out in two columns and I acronym it. F-E-A-R. You can fear everything and run, or you can face everything and rise. Now, isn't that a mindset? Yeah, it's a I mindset. like that. Yeah. You know, for, for, for me in fear, one of the, and, and you know, you, you know, you hear something and you want to give credit to the person who said it and I can never remember, but I heard somewhere, I don't know if it was a podcast or a book, somebody said, you need to look at life, life, like it's an experiment. If life is an experiment, then there never really is failure, right? You tried something that didn't work. That portion of the experiment didn't work. You have to take the things that in that experiment that didn't work, ask yourself why not, adjust, and go experiment again. And I love this thought process because I think that's a lot of what I did early in my sales careers with cold calling and sales and the like was constantly tweaking, constantly experimenting. And, and, you know, there's certain things that still intimidate me, maybe certain rooms to walk in and the likes, but for the right. most part, having just that thought process that everything's an experiment has really helped me push past some of the things that I felt clunky or awkward, or I didn't want to face some sort of rejection or something. That's helpful for me hearing you say that. Donnie, I'm telling you, that's so helpful for me. And I have those same, uh, some, same thinking, similar thinking. And again, it's like, go, go do it. You know, like people say, how do you know what works in sales? I like this one gentleman. I heard him on a podcast. He was a young guy. Loved it. And he's 25 years old. He's getting into it. He says, I don't think you can really answer that until you go out there and find out what works and what doesn't mm. and document it. So we were taught when I got into sales training for machine tool sales. Uh, back in uh, Detroit, Michigan, uh, was to look at when you go out there, have a purpose, have a purpose behind why you're out there, right? Why are you there? What are you here to accomplish, right? What do you want to leave the customer with something to do? What do you want to leave them with, right? So it was such a science and that in sales really is a science. Life is a science and you nailed it. You said the word, experiment without it you will never ever take chances you'll never take risk and another one from jim Rohn, right this is a great one i love from him if you're not willing to risk the unusual you'll have to settle for the ordinary so if you got to say it in jim's voice and like drop it off on the end <laughs> yes yeah so I know. yeah 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 <laughs> of course, of course. Right? So you know what? So my kids, that, that happened to us one time. So my kids, they're all personal growth. We have five children. They're all personal growth students. They had no choice. They'd be in the car and I'm taking them to their baseball game and I got my audios in. Mm. <laughs> and they, 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 they had, so my boys, they had it down to a science. So I'd say, hey, kids, who are you playing today? Oh, we're playing this team. I go, you think you guys are going to win? And this is right out of it. 
Jim Rohn. Of course, of course. He would, <laughs> they would say that. And I go, you guys knock it off. Come on, knock it off. Right. You know, my, my kids were, my kids were my toughest critics. One time when I first got into motivational speaking around 2008, I said, you kids sit in the kitchen, sit on the stools. Dad's going to go through the, go through my presentation, my talk. Now I'm green at this. I'm just learning. Right. I got, you know, my first time I'm ever going to do a motivational speaking engagement. So I'm, I'm testing it on my kids. And I said, okay, you kids, no funny faces. No, <laughs> you know, none of that stuff. You just listen to daddy and like you're in the audience. <laughs> so we get started. My one kid gets up, the youngest, Joey. He gets up and he goes into the family room. He comes back out and he's got winter earmuffs over his ears and he just smiles at me. <laughs> I said, Ready? I looked at him like, and I went, I'm telling you, Donnie, I got through it. And after it was over, we all laughed so hard. We were on the floor laughing. I said, Joe, we don't ever do that to me. He goes, dad, I had to test you. <laughs> Is that hilarious? That's oh, awesome. Well, I mean, so when you, when you first started speaking, um, I mean, it, it sounds like you and I had kind of similar upbringing. So uh -huh. I, I've listened to so much self-help stuff. Like I didn't yep. listen to a whole lot of Wayne Dwyer, but there was something you said about, you know, go sell and then come back and ask questions. Wayne Dyer yeah. has a quote where he's like, don't go see a therapist to uh, uh, try and get better. Go see a therapist because you're already great and you want to improve. Oh, um, I just see, love awesome. that. Right. I love that freaking mindset shift of, of that. So, um, wow. but when you're sitting in front of your kids, uh, yeah. I, I, I can't help it. When I first got into motivation for speaking to men, I think I tried to embrace my inner Jim Rohn. I, I, I'd never be Zig Ziglar. Right? I, I don't have that yeah. spunk to me. Uh, I'm never going to be Tony Robbins. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zig so. Ziglar. Right. <laughs> And if you get listeners have never listened to the water well freaking story with Zig Ziglar, it's one of the greatest speeches of all time, in my opinion. I've um, got to listen to it. Oh, I have dude. To. So, so I'll, I'll give you the it. premise. I'll give you the premise. So uh, Zig has got an old water well, just one of the old pump ones. And he's sitting there and he's cranking. You can go find this YouTube video. And he's just cranking on it. <laughs> I will. And what awesome. he says is, man, on the farm, you just be cranking on this thing forever. And you're going and you hear this thing clanking as he's just cranking on it. And he goes, what you don't understand is that pipe could be 150, 200 feet down there below. And you keep cranking on it, keep cranking on it. And eventually, a little bit of water will come. Eventually, a little bit more water will come. And eventually, as long as you stay cranking, that water will keep coming. And then all of a sudden, it's like clank. Oh, man. But if you man. stop, that water I stops flowing. Love, and he goes, that's life, that. right? That's life. Right? And, then, right? and for me, that was He's like right. one of those things. It, 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 it's a brilliant illustration of what it takes to do a lot of things in this world. Oh, He's spot on. I mean, and I, and I could just picture him saying this. If you don't do it, you'll be cooked in the squat, right? Remember, he'd always say that you'll be cooked in the squat if you don't do it. You know, those, those, those biscuits <laughs> will not rise, man. And I just love that. And uh, no, it, great <laughs> messages, you know, and I love his philosophy too. His philosophy was simple and direct. It was, if you really want something in life, help somebody else get what they want first. And that's, that's, that's something that's so powerful. Yep. But okay, I'm going to listen to that one. Thank you. See, dude, I'm learning so much from you. I appreciate it, Donnie. It's awesome. <laughs> it's it's same, awesome. Same. But you know, the, so, the fear factor, man. Wow, getting over that. You got to do it. If you don't do it, you don't do it. You, you, you're going to always be wondering what was possible. For sure. Well, and it's the only way for, that's the only way I know how to learn is, is I, I know from school, I, I couldn't do the college thing. I'm not a book learner. You know, uh, I, although I love listening to audio books, I didn't read a whole lot of books. I listened to a lot more books, and, you know, but but what I didn't understand for years in the self-help game was I had a whole lot of theory, but I didn't have a whole lot of experience because uh -huh. I was constantly listening, listening, listening. And you know, I, in one job, I had 45 minute commute both ways. So, you know, I'm cramming audiobooks like it's going out of style. And, uh -huh. and what I found is the questions I asked 
were based off a of theory, not application. So what I had to do is I actually had to go get in the game and go sell. So I could come back and ask, you know, hey, okay, on this sales call, I said this. And like, oh, this is what you should have done, right? And so there was real world application to learn yes. from. And 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 once I wrapped my head around, okay, dude, you got to go do it, then come back and ask questions. Otherwise, it's always going to be theory. Oh, man. Man, you're bringing back a lot of memories for me. <laughs> I'm just like you, Donnie. Donnie, I'm telling you, we're, we're very much alike when it comes to that. You, you've got... So later on today, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be at the gym. And uh, I'm going to work on the speed bag and the big bag because as a boxer, I like, to, I like the tempo, the flow, the rhythm that I get into. And uh, it's great for me mentally and it helps me in the business side of it very well. And then I'll do a little lifting, do a little treadmill. But I do know this much. Doing all those things at my age now at 65 and I feel good at 65 is like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to keep doing it. I want to stay on top of my game. I want to be, I want to be at my best as often as I can. Uh, but you know, the real battle is when you get into the ring and that's what you're talking about. Mm. What you just mentioned is you got it. When you went out and got the gloves on and started swinging and actually having somebody hit back at you, you realize, Hey, you know what? This doesn't work. Oh, Oh, wait a minute. This does work. That guy's dropping his right hand. I'm going to parry over the top and I'm going to drop him with a combo. Oh my gosh, I got it figured out. I got it figured out. Now, here's the beautiful thing about going through those trials and tribulations. When you do start clicking on things, look out world. And this is what I shared with one of the gentlemen. I'm going to do the executive coaching later on today. As I said, you have so much power and, and, and so much inside of you. You have an inner burning desire. You just got to find a way to get it out. Because you got it in there, man. It's in there. And you got to unleash that wild beast. You got to do it. And what you'll find is that, you know what? Man, we always fear the things we know the least about. Why don't I go mm. find out as much as possible, right? Brendan Bruchard, he, he writes Motivation Manifesto. I got it behind me. I love it. Opening line. We come into this world endowed with the spirit of a roaring lion. And we live as mice, <laughs> right? What the heck? Why? We have it. So I see, I see some of the things that you've been doing over time. I've, I've been kind of reading up because I was looking forward to meeting you and being on your show. And I, dude, I'm honored to be on your show. Thank uh, you. And I appreciate thank it. you. I, I mean, 100% uh, honored and privileged, but I've seen your growth pattern. <laughs> I see the, the, the next level changes you're taking and you can only do that on a daily basis, right? The daily disciplines yep. back to Jim Rohn, hundred percent perform the ordinary things extraordinarily well through the daily diet of discipline, doing the same For things sure. over and over again. Two things happen when you, when you do things, when you actually take action, when we first start at anything, and this, this is the coaches coming out of me. I was a high school wrestling coach for many, many years. And uh, my job was to, to get that full potential out of those wrestlers. And when they did accomplish things that they never thought they could, the look on their faces, Donnie, they'd come over to you and go, coach, I love you, man. They would say that to mm -hmm. me. I love you. Thanks for pushing me to levels I never thought I was capable of. And that's what you and I need to surround ourselves and all those other entrepreneurs out there who are watching or listening. That's what I meant earlier by saying, taking yourself it. to areas you've never been before, because that's where the growth is, right? That's where the growth is. You stretch yourself, yeah. right? Albert Einstein said, one must develop an instinct as to what one could barely achieve through one's greatest efforts. Now think about that again. One must develop an instinct as to one, what one could barely achieve through one's greatest efforts. Now mark that spot. This comes from a book, Daniel Coyle, the little book of talent. And he says, when you mark that spot, that sweet spot that Jerry McNamara is talking about, that sweet spot, mark it mm -hmm. and stretch and expand a little bit further. And that's the real sweet spot. So when somebody said, Danny, what are you going to do with your speaking career? I started the first one. I said, I'm going to do another one. Matter of fact, I went to a client of mine, a fishing fly reel manufacturer up in Sonora, California, Galvin Fly Reels, was a client of mine for the machine tool sales. I still see him today. I've done multiple team building talks for them. And I love seeing him. 
He said, when are you going to get into motivational speaking? This was about four or five years prior to it. I couldn't wait to tell him that I had done my first one. And when I told him, you know what he said to me? When are you doing one for us? Do you see how it started? Right? When are you doing one for us? And then it went from that to another one, to speaking for Team Alpha Male, UFC fighters. I love being around the fighters. I love the mindset. I love the mental toughness it takes to get in the octagon, the fight game. You just got to be, you got to be tough. You got to be tough. And life is tough. And here's one of the things I love about what you and I are sharing is the entrepreneurial world is not easy. What people don't see is behind the scenes. Darren Hardy said it in his, in, in multiple uh, books that I've read of his, but he nailed it. It's arduous, tedious, laborious, and all of the above. All of the above. Mm. People that are recognized publicly are privately going about doing the things that are necessary to be done while others aren't. They're not doing it because it's hard. It's hard, right? Ed Milet says you, motivation's one thing, right? Inspiration's another. Aspiration's another one, but it doesn't work without perspiration. You got to put in the work. I love your farm. I love what you said. Do the work until it's done. Do the work till the work. Do the till the work's done. That was your. That's your motto. I love it. That's it. It is. It is. You know, this is why I love autobiographies. I love hearing the the journey that people have gone through because, you know, um, most people that have found self made success. Man, they came from nothing. They 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 came from similar backgrounds. That's right. They just did the things consistently over time that wow. that got them there. And I used to ask myself growing up, I'm like, am I just not driven enough? Am I not disciplined enough? Am I not? Am I not? Am I not? And, and the, the trick was I was just on the path to the journey and I was playing the short game and not the long game. Oh, so, that's a good way uh, to put it, man. Yeah, the long game. Good. Right. Because I, I, I literally that. was looking at a couple oh, of awesome. uh, other companies that have done things that we're trying to build. And I, I was thinking through just how much more success they've found. And then I heard one of them on a podcast interview. And now, Grant, I'm getting ready to hit year six in a business. And I heard this guy on a podcast interview go, man, seven years into doing this. And I couldn't pay my mortgage. I couldn't pay my, my, you know, the, the house bills. I was still making it work. And I was sitting there looking at this guy going, holy shit, look what he's accomplished, look what he's done. And, and it, it, it's, it's one of those realism reminders that what game are you playing? You know, Bill Gates, you can, you know, we overestimate what we can accomplish in a year, but we underestimate what we can do in 10. You know, I'm, I'm six years in and still learning, man. But I'm telling you, these next three I'm stoked for. Yeah, I, I believe you've got a great future and your future will be as great as you want it to be. I said the best way to predict your future is to create your future. You're yeah. in charge of it. You're in charge of it, right? One day I was driving from uh, Lodi, California and Sacramento. I was on a, on a business day and I was overwhelmed, Donnie. With, I wanted to learn so much and I wanted to learn as much as I could, as fast as I could. And I started realizing what you just said hit a good point. The short game and the long game. It's a long game. If you make progress every day, you're going to be just fine. It's when you go back to your bad habits and complacency sets in. So I came up and I said, man, Danny, I got to simplify this stuff. Like I'd come up with so so many great ideas. And then that little Joe Pesci voice sits on your shoulder and says, hey, you can't do this. You can't do this, man. I'm telling you, you can't do it. And I'm like, get out of here, Joe. I can do this, right? And so I came up with this acronym and it it had made sense to me and it simplifies things for me today. And it's C-P-P-A. You create, you plan, you prepare and go achieve. Create, plan, prepare and achieve. Now someone says, hey, that's kind of general. No, it isn't. You get a creative thought. You start believing in it. This could work. Yeah, if I just surround myself with certain things, I gotta, I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that'll work. And you start building this belief system into you, your system. And once you start believing it, you go, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take action. And when you take action and you have an attitude that is on fire to accomplish it, you'll go out and perform, right? 
And this is why I love what, what Jim yeah, Rohn shares, right? Yeah. Personal philosophy drives attitude. Attitude drives actions. Actions drives results. And results gives you your lifestyle. Hey, do yourself a favor. Look at your lifestyle. If you're not happy, look at your results. If you're not happy with your results, look at the actions you're taking. And your actions are usually driven by your attitude. And if your attitude stinks, it's only because you don't know why you're doing it. That's it. And so I came up with that little philosophy and a little acronym, and it's helped me tremendously. You know, and, and, and what I got to try to always keep in mind, too, is, is getting to know other people and learn from them, understand where they're coming from, right? And, and learning from them and helping them and always having the mind of a servant. I always want to serve people. And uh, it's amazing what you, you get know, in return. I, I, I love it. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, tremendously. I was a guy for many, many years that just gave, 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 and and I gave a lot. I had okay. to get to a point to where I had to add a additional philosophy on top of my own belief because I heard in my entire life, you've got to serve, you've got to give to others, and I, I truly believe that that's a real thing. However... If you never take, you're going to be taken advantage of. So I had to come up with a new philosophy that works really well for me, which is give, 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 take, give. So literally, how can Ooh, I give them four to one, oh, right? That's good. That's how can good. I give them so much more, but also remember that I have to take? So, so if we were having a networking conversation, I'm going to be like, all right, Dan, who are three people that you need to meet? What industries? And we spend some time, right? And I try and open those doors and I would get you three introductions. And then I would say, Hey, Dan, these are some of the people I'm looking to meet, like people who have podcasts or people who have stages. And then I'd help you give me one. And then I would turn around and I would try and go out of my way to find you one more. Um, right. Because like it's, it. it's, it builds reciprocity, but it's, it's the reciprocity that you can control. Right, that you can take, you know, advantage of. I don't yeah. want people to just give. I want them to remember they have to take, or people will take advantage of them. Yeah. So you know, I've heard different sides to that. I think some people, if they misunderstand what you say, they think you're being selfish. And the fact of the matter is, you're not. So, for example, yes. if we have a talent, if we have a talent, we need to spread that talent. But we also need to be rewarded. And that's what you're talking about is you got to get rewarded. And in this case, in the world of entrepreneurship, in the world we live in, there are things called expenses, right? I like what that comedian said, you know, I have all the money I'll ever need for the rest of my life until I need to buy something, right? <laughs> so <laughs> so you, what you're talking about is I truly understand it. Uh, this gentleman I consulted on, Michael, that I'm going to be doing a... Uh, uh, another live event with, we both understand it. You have to monetize it. If you're going to mm. give value, you need to be rewarded for that. Now rewards come in a lot of different ways. It might be just self, self feeling good about what you're doing, but you also have to pay the bills, right? You got to, so I get it. I get it. And I, I love that. So I love that. Give, 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 take, give. Is that give, give, yep. give, take, give. Thank you for sharing that with me. That's it. That's powerful. That's a powerful That's philosophy. And, you know, you just got fed up with it, right? You just, wait a minute. I'm doing all yeah. this stuff and I'm not getting anything in return. And so there's nothing wrong. You know, we live in a world where people know they have to, they have to, uh, uh, you know, transfer currency, right? You know, it's currency. It's money. Yeah, yeah we do it. That's how, that's how we, we, we make the world go round, right? So it's powerful. And relationships in that, for that yeah. matter, are currency. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I love telling people that if you look around and if every year your network's the same, you're playing the wrong game. You know, wow, it doesn't mean you won't so have friends powerful. for life, right? You're going to have people that you're friends with for life. But if they're the same faces that are in your tightest circle, then you're playing the wrong game because your circle needs to be pushed. Your circle needs to go bigger. You need to be getting into more exclusive conversations that others would only wish or dream to get into because you're pushing the envelope of your life and business. And that's, and, and that's a phrase I have to tell myself on a regular basis. You know, I, I was attracted to your uh, information that you've been sharing with people, uh, your experiences, uh, the latest summit, uh, your, your, your 
stuff that you share on LinkedIn and, 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 and your podcasts, you, you're crushing it in a way uh, that when it comes to what you just hit on, the networking part of it, I love it. And I've seen, I can tell, I can tell. And, and you're, you're, you're right about that. You have to, you can't stay in this small group networking, let's say at the same place every time, every day. Now it's good to be consistent, right? But you got to expand yep. beyond that. You got to, you got to make that pie bigger. So for example, that philosophy is amazing because I used that philosophy when I started on my own. What I did is I looked at machine tool business as one aspect of income. Then I said, what's the next best thing that feeds the purchasing of equipment is the work. So I go to the contract manufacturers, find out where they want to get their parts made. And then I turn them on to, to contract machine shops. Mm. And they pay me 10% brokerage and I get paid 10% of every job that goes through there for the rest of the, my life as long as I have that company in there. And last but not least, what else do companies want? They want to build their teams, right? The most powerful asset in their company are their people. But it goes beyond that. See, this is where people miss it. It's not just the greatest asset in your company are your people. It's finding the right people. Mm. And there are criterias for finding out, do they have the qualifications and I'm not talking about the simple thing. Tell me what your strengths are. Tell me what you think you should improve on. Like we all know that. We should know that by now, right? We're varsity now. Yeah. We've got our letters. We're varsity. So, you know, we don't have to be, you know, trained on that part of it. What I want to find out, hey, how do you handle success? How do you handle failure? And give me some examples of how you did that in the company that you worked in prior. Matter of fact, let me ask you a question. Um, you know, are you growing yourself every day? Hmm. What are you doing to grow yourself? Tell me a little bit. I want to learn from you. Pretend, here, this is the, I want to learn from you. Tell me, tell me where maybe I could grow. Anything you're reading or listening to that you'd love to share with me or you think could make our company better once you join the team? Love you know, that. Here's this humble, hungry, and smart, right? Humble doesn't mean you think less of yourself. It just means you think of yourself less. And hungry is what you are. And I am. We're always the student. School never gets out. We're going to learn as much as we can. And the smart part is not a book smart. It's not college smart. You know what it is? It's reading a room, reading a person. Yes. And understanding what makes them tick. So this is all what you and I are involved with. And when we're networking with people. And, and I was going to ask you, when you, that, that's a good philosophy that you just used, that ratio, hmm. that three to one. Can you explain that one more time? I love that what you said about when you meet, you introduce me to three people and then. Yeah. So the whole theory came from the, uh, I was helping so many people and I heard a lot of people say, man, if I'm out networking, I give so many referrals, I get so many leads, I give so many introductions and I get nothing out of it. And I realized that early in my career when I was hearing a lot of that, that was my problem. I was, I was serving all these people and it wasn't coming back. And there was no, I wasn't give to get, I wasn't giving to gain anything. I was giving because I thought it was the right thing to do. Yeah. But what I realized by just giving that it was not ultimately serving my business, my companies, my team, my people. Uh -huh. So I had to come up with, okay, how do I, give and make sure I receive. So, so it's about controlling the rest re reciprocity by knowing specifically how to ask somebody who they need to meet and go out of your way to open the, their world up for them. Like, so for me, giving introductions and getting people into the right rooms is one of my favorite things on the planet to do. Awesome. But, See, and that, passionate about it. You're passionate about absolutely. it. I love it. And in the same token though, I need to be able to get into their Rolodex so I can get into the right rooms that I need to get into because they're going to know right. people who have podcasts. They're going to know people who have stages. And because people aren't wired this way, I will even go so far to go, hey, do you know anybody who has a podcast? Right After I've already made three or four introductions, I'll say, do you have anybody who has a That's podcast? Awesome. And they'll look at me and they're like, well, I don't know. I said, well, do you care if we just go over to LinkedIn, you type in podcast, click on first connections, see what pop up. And you'll be amazed the number of people like, oh my God, I actually know some podcasters. I'm like, how well do you know them? 
You're like, well, pretty well. I'm like, would you be okay making that introduction for me? And they'll do it right then and there. And they're excited because they can actually introduce me to somebody else. And then I will give oh, them one man, more, good. Uh, yeah. you know, introduction just so I make sure that they understand this all comes from a place of love. This all comes from, I want to help you. Yeah. Right. I just got to coach you through how you can help me too. Okay. Donnie, I got to share something with you, man. You know, you, we learn from each other, right? Yep. Dude, I, I see the moment we talked about that subject, the networking, what you're really good at, did your eyes go, wow, they got a little, your energy picked up, your facial expression picked up a little bit. And you know why? It's because it's what you love to do and you're good at it. And so if you're good at something, you're not, it's not bragging. You know, I, I always like what people say, look at, if, if I tell you how good you are, that's fact. Now, if you keep telling me how good you are, that's bragging. If I keep telling you how good I am, that's bragging. But if you tell me how good I am, that's fact, because that's what you're feeling. That's what you're getting from me. And that's what I'm getting from you. I see you as a professional that's been through the trenches. You've been through the, hey, look, at none of us can appreciate where we are now until we know where we've been. For sure. We've been at the bottom, right? We know what it, we, we know. So, uh, and, and I don't want to go back there. That's a place I don't want to go back. And so that's part of the motivation, right? The motive for not going back. So you, you're good at what you do and you want to get better. That's the best part about it. You don't want to stop where you are. I don't find you to be a person that would be happy with complacency because what happens over time and complacency, it becomes the thief of all future achievements, right? It's a thief. And then we start making excuses in our life and excuses are the nails that build houses of failure. And if you're not careful, you'll have a mansion built soon. So you got to be real careful. Right. And so here you are, here you are, you're good at it. You keep expanding on it. And I believe you're going to grow this even more and more. And if you are the same person a year from now, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. you failed. A hundred percent. I failed. If I'm not, if, if a year from now, if I'm not a little, let's, you might say a little different Danny Prado, right? I always say reinvent yourself every day. Uriah Faber. When I gave a talk one time to the team over there, um, I said, we need to reinvent ourselves every day. And he said, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And then he hit on one other thing with me. And when I mentioned this, he just says, boy, I love this. I said, there's a huge difference between, you know, getting people to cooperate, you, cooperate with you in the business or on a team versus collaboration. Mm. And it's what you and I are talking about. We're collaborating right now. We're learning a lot from each other. I know I'm learning a lot from you. I'll take it that much. I'll say that much. And I hope you, I hope you feel the same that you're same. picking up some stuff from me. So uh, cooperation, John C. Maxwell said, cooperation says, why don't we get along so we get at least something done? Or <laughs> collaboration, right? Something, just something, right? Yep. Collaboration says, why don't we work together as a team so we get what has to get done? And Uriah, yo, Uriah's face, he looked at me, he goes, not enough buy-in with cooperation, is it, Danny? I go, absolutely not. So all you fighters here today, learn from one another. Pick up a tip from buddy. Get a skill set. Raise it. Add some more skill sets. Become more valuable. When you become more valuable, you're going to be incredible for your sport, for your industry, for your market, for your client, for your customer. Because this is how we all get paid. We get paid according to the value that we bring to all those areas of our life. Dan Crazy. Prado. Brother, we could keep doing this for a while, my friend. Uh, and you've now become a friend, man. I, I've, I've enjoyed the hell out of this sitting Thank across you. from you. Oh, man, fun. same here. I feel, feel the same way for you. Thanks for, uh, for mentoring me here. Oh. I loved it. I, I feel like you've, uh, yeah, I definitely want you in the, in the circle of success. I call it the welcome to the house of champions. <laughs> when you call my phone number, one day you'll call it and say, hi, Dan Prado here. Thanks for calling the house of champions. How can I help you win today? And <laughs> well, I really mean it. I love it. That's great. Cause my company's success champion. So, so we are, I, I saw that <laughs> we are aligned. We are aligned. Right well, on brother. Well, brother, how do people get in touch with you? How do they reach out? How do they find you? Hey, thank you. Uh, you can find me on the, the venues of LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. I do have a website. It's uh, introduced by Clay Guida, the Hall of Famer. We've uh, become friends throughout the, my talks over there in business and just a great down to earth guy. So that's where you can find me in, in those four venues. Again, Instagram, Facebook, my website, just go to Dan Prado and you'll see home and it'll open up. 
And uh, again, I do sales training. I do all that other stuff and, and I love it. Okay. So thanks for asking. Absolutely. Thanks for asking my brother. Guys, make sure you go check out Dan's stuff. If it's, if it's half as good as this interview has been, which of my time, I hope you guys got something out of it, but I got a ton of value out of this one. So no, Same here. <laughs> freaking, guys, do us a, a fun favor. If you've listened this long and you've hung out with this and you got one tip or trick, take a screenshot wherever you're listening to this and post it on social media. And when you do that, tag me and Dan in it. We'll come find it. We'll come engage with you. We'll come comment with you. But that screenshot shows that you guys value the information. And it allows us to keep going down this path and let us know we're heading in the right direction. So, as always, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. Love you, mean it. See you back.